Hi everyone, my name is Justin Odisho and welcome to the first episode of How to Edit Video. This is going to be an episode by episode series or playlist where I'm going to take you from the very first steps, getting started, the gear you need, what video editing is, all the way to editing, exporting, and sharing your final projects. So if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to stay tuned for all the new episodes and leave a like on it below if you guys like the concept of this series. And for episode one here, we're going to talk about getting started, what is video editing, and what gear and software you're going to need. So video editing to me is basically just arranging all of these different clips and footages that you capture, sounds, pictures, audio, and putting them all together on a canvas, trimming them away to make your final project that tells a story in a sequence. So as technology gets more and more advanced, pretty much anything can record video nowadays. Your refrigerator can probably record video. So there's a few different options you have. One, you can go the all mobile route, and this would be good for a beginner, someone who's limited on budget and resources. You can use your phone to record and free applications right on your phone, like iMovie and things like that to edit and cut a project and export it to something like YouTube or the web, all directly from the phone. However, if you want to start getting into more serious, considered projects, then you're going to need to go with the second, more traditional option, some sort of video camera and an editing computer. Now, being an editor doesn't require that you're also the director shooting the video, but more and more nowadays with people on YouTube and whatnot, the two are pretty connected. You can't separate them. And it is good to know some things about how video is actually shot because that's what you're going to be working with. So if you know about frame rates, shutter speeds, exposure, all that, it's going to help you understand what you're working with better. But keep in mind, being a video editor doesn't mean that you have to be a camera guy too. You could just be doing the sequencing, cutting and editing. And actually in professional industry edits, like a big music video or something, there's usually a separate person who does the sequencing, the cutting, the coloring, the special effects. There's whole different teams for each different piece of the project. But here on YouTube and a lot of us, we're one man armies. And so I'm going to try to give you guys the best overall resource and you can find your specialty and your passion as you go on. So talking about cameras and laptops, this is a very variable question. It all depends on your budget, your needs, your features that you want. For example, this camera is a small mirrorless camera, the Canon G7X Mark II. It's got a flip out screen. Maybe you want that for vlogging, but it only goes up to 60 frames per second. So maybe if you wanted to get super slow motion, you might want to look into something like the Sony, which goes up to a little higher frames per second. Or maybe you're going to get a DSLR. It's a bit bigger, but you can get a little bit more megapixels out of it. Also, you got to do the research on what fits within your budget. So those are whole different topics. If you want to see what gear I personally use just for making my YouTube videos, then I'll leave a link in the description below to all of my stuff. But that's for what I do. Maybe you want to do something different. Now let's talk about computers. So if you're an editor, you're going to either be working on a desktop or a laptop. Now the more powerful option that you could probably get more bang for your buck for is a nice solid desktop. You'll get a big screen, a good solid area to work on. And the specs that are important when you're talking about video editing are things like RAM. Now for video editing softwares like Adobe Premiere Pro or Final Cut, they usually list a certain base level recommendation like Adobe has their recommendations, which I'll link you guys to. So you can compare if you're trying to build your own computer, but at least 16 gigabytes of RAM is pretty good, especially as footages start getting up to 4K, 6K resolution. Those are harder to edit and the more RAM you have, the better. Now, I actually personally work on a laptop and the reason I do is because I purchased this a couple years ago when I also needed something to go to college with and take to classes and fit in my backpack. So if you're traveling, if you're an on the go editor, you know you're not gonna be at your one workstation a lot, then I would definitely recommend a laptop with a capable amount of RAM. This is a MacBook Pro Retina. I'll leave the specs to that. It's not the greatest thing. 4K footage still is not as fast as it could be, but it's pretty fast overall. It never gives me problems for what I personally edit. And I love that I can take it anywhere I want and it just works without any issues. 
So to answer the question they get asked all the time is what's a good laptop or what's the minimum specs? Look up the minimum specs for the program that you're going to be using. It's usually listed on the person's website like Adobe or Apple or Final Cut. And consider your budget, your needs. Are you a student? Are you traveling? Or are you going to be at one workstation a lot? Now I could go on and on about all the different lenses and gear you need when you're talking about cameras like memory cards, all that. But that's a whole different playlist as well as how to shoot good video, which we'll talk a little bit about aspects of video. But I'm assuming that you're going to know at least how to shoot video, get it on a memory card or your phone or whatever, and transfer it to your computer so you can begin working. Now we got to figure out what editing software are we going to use. And the editing software that I'm going to personally use throughout the remaining series of this episode and that I use on my channel is the Adobe Creative Suite. This includes programs like Premiere Pro, After Effects, Photoshop, Lightroom, and it all just ties together nicely for me because I personally started my editing journey in about 2007, 2008 with Photoshop and After Effects, although I actually learned how to edit mostly on Sony Vegas back in 2008. And that's another point I wanted to make is that even if you don't end up using the same program as me, if you don't pick Premiere Pro and you have Final Cut because that's what came with your computer or something, that's fine because most of the concepts of video editing, like sequencing, timing, color, they're all universal no matter what tools you use. So if you're starting fresh, I personally use the Adobe Suite. I like it. I would happily recommend it to someone. However, there's many people that love and use Final Cut. Again, it all depends on your budget, your resources. I haven't personally used Final Cut much enough to give an opinion about it, but I would suggest to you to download some free trials, play around with them, and see which one works best. And if you're limited to a certain one or a free software or whatever just because of your budget or resources, don't worry, the concepts of video editing are pretty universal. So since I'm going to be using Creative Cloud, I'll leave a link below to where you can get it. And if you're a student, you actually get a pretty good discount and it makes it pretty affordable if you just you know, don't order one or two more extra pizzas a month and you can make it work if you really try. So we figured out what video editing is. We've got our camera, we've got our gear, we've got everything ready. So I think I'm gonna wrap up the first episode here and I'm gonna continue in the next episodes where we're gonna go into actually taking our clips in, starting to build out projects and sequences and continue from there. So make sure you subscribe to stay tuned for the rest of this series. Let me know if there's a specific thing that you want me to cover in future episodes in the comments below. And follow me on social media at Justin Odisho on Instagram, Twitter to stay tuned with me. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.